So UFC 283, Tashira versus Hill just wrapped up, and I just live streamed the whole thing, eight hour live stream, quite a few people come in to enjoy the card with me, and I really, really appreciate that. I'm wearing the outfit I wore during the live stream. I was thinking about a suit and tie, but I thought that wouldn't be enough, so I've decided to put on a beautiful festival beach sort of outfit for the event, and we're going to be talking about it in this video and probably the next video as well. Hill just beat up Tashira for five rounds, looked absolutely incredible in the fight, looked so much better than I expected. I personally don't want to see Hill versus Ankalaev. I don't think Ankalaev has earned a title shot. It was a draw against Blahovic. Um, uh, Blahovic won the first three rounds, and then Ankalaev won the last two with a 10-8 in the fifth. It was a draw. Juri Prohaska claimed that he's going to be back six months after his shoulder surgery, and that surgery happened about six weeks ago. So we've got about four and a half months from now where Yuri's going to be A+, plus, ready to go. So maybe in five months, six months' time or so, we can schedule Yuri Prohaska versus Jamal Hill for the title. We can do Jan Blachowicz versus Magomed Ankalaev in the meantime for maybe like a number one contender, and then the winner of that fight can fight the winner of Prohaska versus Hill. Makes sense to me. I think Ankalaev would beat... Uh, Blahovic in the rematch, and then I think he would have a very competitive fight with either Prashashka or Hill. I think you'd beat Hill. I think Yuri would be a tough fight, but it depends on how good Yuri's really recovered from that shoulder injury, but that's the fight to make, in my opinion. I'm not too interested in seeing Hill make a quick turnaround. Uh, I want to see Hill versus Prashashka. That's the fight. Uh, Moreno looked incredible against Davis and Figueredo. I was really salty <laughs> about it because <laughs> I wanted Figgy to win, man. But um, yeah, Moreno won the fight. Looked really good. UFC's wanted a, um, a, a Mexican champion for a long time. Now that they've finally got a Mexican champion, let's, let's main event, a pay-per-view, or maybe like a fight night if we can't get like a solid undercard for, for Moreno versus Pantoa. It's the obvious fight to make. Alejandro Pantoa weighed in. As the um, as like the backup for the fight, and Pantoa has also already beaten Brandon Moreno twice as well. So there's history there. Pantoa could maybe talk a bit of smack at the at the press conference, saying that he's too old up on Moreno, this and that. But um, that's the the fight that I think makes sense. Gilbert Burns versus Neil Magny. Um, Burns called for Colby Covington. Do I think he gets Colby Covington? Maybe. I don't think he does, though. I don't think Colby Covington's that interested in the fight. I think Colby Covington's trying to milk this Jorge Masvidal situation for all it's worth. We can get as much money out of the court case he possibly can. So let's do Bilal Muhammad versus um, Gilbert Burns. Maybe Bilal Muhammad has already earned a title shot, so that maybe maybe doesn't make all that much sense, but I just don't think Colby Covington's going to be that keen to fight Burns. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the only fight that you could really do because Gilbert Burns wants to make a really quick turnaround. So maybe if he wants to make a super quick turnaround, he could fight the winner of Rachmanov and Neil. But for now, yeah, I think that's that's just the fight. Muhammad, Bilal Muhammad versus Burns. Jessica Andrade just beat up Lauren Murphy. Um, she wants a title shot at 115 pounds. I don't think that's what they're going to do. I think what they're going to do is Zhang Wei Li versus Raz Namajunas 3. So why not just do... Carla Esparza versus Jessica Andrade, and maybe if Jessica Andrade wins that fight, she can get a title shot at 115 pounds. I would like to make a point that Jessica Andrade won the fight against Laurie Murphy at 125, so it doesn't really count as a win at strawweight, does it? So if she beats, if she beats Carla Esparza, which is what I think she would do, she'll be the number one contender at 115, and then she can get a title shot again after that. I think that just makes sense. Johnny Walker just beat Paul Craig once again. We've got to look to the rankings here. And if we look at the rankings, John Walker will probably be ranked number 9 or 8. And just below him is the man that does not have a fight booked right now. You can maybe do Johnny Walker versus Anthony Smith, actually. Now that I think about it, that could make sense. Or when's Alexander Rakic going to make his return? But the, the fight that I have booked is Vulcan Ustamir. They've got a common opponent in Paul Craig. Walker just knocked out Paul Craig in the first round. Vulcan Ustamir just went to war with Krylov, but that was quite a few months ago now. So we should have recovered by then. Let's do a somewhat quick turnaround. I'm thinking maybe like UFC 287 um, on the main card, maybe. Or like featured prelim, Vulcan Ustamir versus Johnny Walker. Get some movement in the light heavyweight division. I like it. Speaking of the light heavyweight division, Ihor Bateria beat Shogun Hua, and then he did a like a Fortnite dance on him or whatever. We don't let that slide around here. You're not getting a rewarded for that, you're getting punished. So you're going to fight the winner of Tyson Pedro versus Mingyang Zhang. I feel like Tyson Pedro is going to win, and a lot of people are going to sleep on Mingyang Zhang in the matchup, but he's a very good boxer. Both guys are first round KO wins. Um, all of Tyson Pedro's wins are in the first round, all of Mingyang Zhang's fights have ended in the first round, or all of his wins are in the first round. So it's going to be a live fight for a knockout from either guy. I think Pedro wins it. So when Tyson Pedro beats uh, Ming Yang Zhang, we can turn him around pretty quickly. UFC 287 prelims or so against Ihor Bateria. Let's make sense. We will not reward 
dancing on Shogun Hua after you've knocked him out in the first round is so disrespectful for his retirement fight. Igor Bateria versus Tyson Pedro is the fight. Bruno Fajaya versus Gregory Rodriguez just took place, and I would like to point out with this next matchup that I'm going to give, you might think that they're a little bit too highly ranked considering Bruno Fajaya is 1-0 in the UFC, but you need to consider this, right, and understand where I'm coming from. Gregory Rodriguez was ranked number 21 in the middleweight division, so I'm going to give Bruno Fajaya a fighter that's just outside of the rankings, and if Bruno Fajaya can beat him, then you could argue that Bruno Fajaya has actually earned a shot at the top 15 off just two wins, and that is Gerald Mearshart. We're going to give Bruno Fajaya the Gerald Mearshart treatment. Gerald Mearshart has a fight booked against Abus Magomedov. It got cancelled. He should be in shape to maybe take a short notice sort of um, turnaround fight, so maybe we could do Bruno Fajaya. Versus Gerald Mearshart, prelims on UFC 285, maybe a fight night after UFC 285, kind of around that sort of time in April, um, and only a few months' time, I think it makes sense to me. Uh, Bruno Silva versus Gerald Mearshart is a fight I personally want to see, and if Bruno Silva can beat Gerald Mearshart, he's arguably earned himself a shot at someone like Chris Curtis, or, or Mikhail Oksashek, or someone like that that's just in the top 15, or just outside of the top 15. Fight to make, in my opinion, Tiago Moises was originally meant to fight Garam Kutab Tlidze. Let's still do that fight. Uh, Tiago Moises just beat a short notice replacement in Malkuz Al Costa. I don't think it moves him up the rankings too much at lightweight. Garam Kutab Tlidze was injured with something, but I think. I don't think the injury was too bad. I think it was like a staph infection or some sort of injury of sorts. I think Kutab Tlidze should be ready to go maybe like four months' time. I don't know when Moises wants to come back, but fight makes sense to me. Gabriel Bonfim just beat, beat, beat Munila Zez, who's had a pretty good run in the UFC himself. So let's test Gabriel Bonfim in a fight that's going to test him, but also a fight that's winnable, but also winnable for his opponent as well, and that's against Phil Rowe. He's 10-3, but he's on a pretty solid win streak in the UFC right now. We're talking about a win over Orion Koske, then Jason Witt, and then Nico Price, so... He's somewhat sitting around like ranked number 30 or so in the welterweight division. I believe Gabriel Bonfim will probably be sitting there around there as well. Gabriel Bonfim versus Phil Rowe. Prospect versus Prospect. And I do think Gabriel Bonfim would win that matchup and move to 15-0, which would be fantastic. Jelton Almeida. He seems like he's made a full commitment to heavyweight. I personally like him at light heavyweight, but it looks like he's going to stay at heavyweight. That's all good. We look at the UFC rankings, and he just beat the number 15th ranked guy. If I scroll down... He beat Shamil Abdurakimov, so Jelton Almeida is going to be ranked like number 14, 13, or 15. I'm looking at the rankings. He could fight Chris Dalkaus. I feel like Chris Dalkaus would be forced to take the match up because he's on a losing streak right now. Could make sense. He could fight Yaisino Rosenstrike. I just don't think Yaisino Rosenstrike will want to take that fight. I understand. Alexander Volkov is the um, fighter I have lined up for Jelton Almeida. I feel like Alexander Volkov is one of those guys that will just fight anyone, anywhere. He's going pretty good in his career. You know, he recently fought Cyril Garn and then he beat Marcin Tiberi. He's coming off that win over Yozino Rosenstrike where he looked fantastic. Let's really test Yaltin Almeida against a very tough opponent, but also a highly ranked opponent as well. And let's get Yaltin Almeida's name up in there because he is a young guy for heavyweight. He's almost 32 years old. But let's push him a little bit, you know what I mean? Let's No more of these easy fights. Almeida has been having somewhat easy fights. Not really his fault. A couple of the guys were short-notice replacements in the UFC run. Torkelch was a short-notice replacement. Uh, Parker Porter was a short-notice replacement. Shamil was probably the best guy he's actually fought outside of um, Dana White's contender series opponents. So let's test him. Let's give him Alexander Volkov. Makes sense to me. Cody Stamen. Did he really beat Luan Lacerda, though? I thought Luan Lacerda won the first round and the third round, but... On paper, Cody Stamen won on the Georgia Judges scorecards. I thought Lacerda won the first round because Stoneman did absolutely nothing in the first round whatsoever. And then he got uh, out grappled and also outstruck in the third round. So I thought um, Lacerda won. But that's okay. Um, he can move up the rankings and fight Javid Basharat. Um, Javid Basharat's looking for a ranked opponent. Literally everyone that's ranked has a fight booked right now, aside from Umar Magomedov. Unless they're doing Javid Basharat versus Umar Magomedov, I don't think they're going to do that. So let's do um, let's do Cody Stamen versus Javid. Cody Stamen uh, is a borderline ranked guy. He used to be ranked pretty highly in the division as well. And I think that would be a fight. The winner can then get a ranked opponent and get back into the rankings. Makes sense to me. 
Ismail Bonfim just beat up Terence McKinney. Looked absolutely incredible. The fight to make is Ismail Bonfim versus Paddy Pimblett. But do I think that's going to happen? No. So Ismail Bonfim, this isn't just like your regular guy making his UFC debut. He's 18 and three, beat a 28 and three opponent in the Dana White's Contender Series. Just beat up Terence McKinney in the first round, then knocked him out in the second brutally. Might I add? A guy that is sitting just outside the top 15 is Drakkar Close. And Drakkar Close was ranked at number 15 at some point, but um, unfortunately he's had a few fights fall out. He's now dropped out of the top 15. I think that's the fight to make. I think Ismail Bonfim versus Drakkar Close, the winner, can then maybe fight the number 15 or 14 ranked opponent in the lightweight division. Because Ismail Bonfim and both his brother Gabriel Bonfim are on the come up, man. They're really coming after everybody, so... Nicholas Dalby beat Wiley Alves. I picked Wiley Alves in that fight, but I did think that Dalby won the fight. I thought he won the first two rounds. And um, the thing about Nicholas Dalby here is he's an older guy. He's 38 years old, and he's got a really good record. And you know what we can do with a really good record and an older guy? Feed him to an up-and-coming prospect to make his record look really good and make him look like he's beaten some really good guys. So Hanat Fakrinadov... Here you go, he's Nicholas Dalby, you know, we can say an outfit run it off just beat a 21 and 4 opponent in his last fight, you know what I mean, and uh, that's the fight, unless unless Dalby would rather fight Michael Morales, who I think would beat Hanat, but um, yeah, I think that's the fight to do, let's do that. Josiane Nunes just beat Zero Fan, she really struggled with the size of Zero Fan, um, but she did win the fight, she beat up Zero Fan, um, not super badly, but Fan had some moments, which was concerning for Nunes, for sure, um, big time actually, big concern for Nunes, but um, yeah, I've, I've, I mean, it's women's 145. There's no rankings. There's no rankings. So I have to guess who's fighting at 145 pounds next. And I think it would be Macy Chiasson. She missed weight at 135 badly. She weighed at 139.5. I do not see this girl fighting at bantamweight ever again. So she'll be fighting her next fight at 145. And I think she would probably beat Yosiane Nunes, to be honest, because Yosiane Nunes is five foot two. And Macy Yes wants 5'11. Um, it would be an even bigger size advantage disadvantage than she had against Zero Fan. But there's no one at 145. If Yosiane Nunes wants to take her career a little bit more seriously and be like looked at as a more serious fighter, she would fight at 135, a division with his actually ranking system. But there isn't at 145, so good for her. Daniel Marcos versus Simon Oliveira. Just beat Simon Oliveira. Looked really, really impressive in that fight. Looked better than I thought he would. I did pick Marcos to win, but I didn't expect him to look that good. And I think he should fight Christian Canones. It's going to be a prospect versus prospect matchup. I believe Daniel Marcos is about 30 years old. So he's young enough to be a prospect himself. He's 14-0. Christian Canones is 17-3 and and 26 years old. And he's from Mexico. So here's what we do. Christian Canones versus Daniel Marcos on the prelims of the Brandon Moreno versus Alejandro Pantoa card. Makes all the sense in the world to me. And then the winner of that fight, you can start to give a serious push as like the next prospect. Because Daniel Marcos, if he won, he would be 15-0. and 0. And if Christian Canones won, he'd be 18-3 and 3 and he would have just beaten a 14-0 and 0 opponent. So you can really push Christian Canones as a really good prospect. Or you can really push Daniel Marcos as a really good prospect from there. So I think that makes sense. Uh, to me, prospect versus prospect matchup, and then the winner can uh, get a big push from the UFC, big promotional push, big rankings push, uh, maybe even some more favorable matchups to pad the record a little bit, make it look a little bit better than it is. You know how it is, you know how it works. Um, that's it. That's what I think we do. Um, let me know what you think in the comments, though. Let me know what you think about the card. Let me know what you think about the matchups I just made. Hypes though, I think I think this is this is this is it. This is how we do it, boys. This is this is a good good setup. I don't want to see Ankalaev versus Hill. Ankalaev literally lost three rounds. To, um, he literally lost three rounds to um to Jan. We're not rewarding him losing three rounds to Jan with a title shot. This doesn't make sense. So Hill versus Yuri. That's the fight. That's the fight I want to see. Um, and uh, Alex Pajera as well wants to move up to two hundred five as well. So that would be. Fantastic. I mean, maybe Hill versus Pahaya you could do. I think it's a little bit silly though, but that could be cool. But yeah, oh, I'll leave it there.